I'm Brett Segmiller, and today I'm going to be talking about the latest entry into one of my favorite film franchises of all time, the Mission Impossible series. Mission Impossible Fallout is widely considered to be one of, if not the best, film in the Mission Impossible franchise. But unfortunately, I don't consider Fallout to be a good Mission Impossible film, or even a good film in general for that matter, much to my disappointment. I was as hyped as anybody going into the film, but for me, there was one point in particular that left me feeling disengaged with the whole affair. This is how one scene ruined Mission Impossible Fallout. Mission Impossible Fallout begins with Ethan Hunt standing beside a lake with his ex-wife Julia and a priest reciting wedding vows. Before long, it's revealed through progressively sinister dialogue that the priest is none other than Solomon Lane the antagonist of the previous film, Rogue Nation. And then suddenly, a nuclear blast erupts, turning the three individuals to ash. And then, Ethan wakes up. The dream sequence at the beginning of Fallout, while not an inherently terrible scene, ultimately sets the tone for the rest of the film. From the outset, it's obvious that Fallout is a different kind of Mission Impossible movie, for better or worse. Not only does the dream sequence establish a dark, emotionally tortured narrative, but right from the get-go, we understand that whatever we see throughout the course of the film might not be real. That's a problem, because by their very nature, the Mission Impossible movies are not psychological thrillers or anything like that. They're action-adventure movies. From the very beginning of the movie, there was something intrinsically off about Fallout. It had neither the charm of Ghost Protocol, nor the paranoia of the 90s original. But when I watched Fallout for the first time, I found myself losing interest in the story, and just as I was about to lose all interest, there was this one beautiful scene that made me think that maybe Fallout had something up its sleeve after all. This was the scene that I felt the plot had been leading me towards. Here was the moment where Ethan Hunt was truly going to face the fallout from his past actions, where he would have to make a truly impossible choice. The scene starts after Ethan infiltrates a nightclub in Paris and poses as a potential buyer of plutonium, named John Lark. He finds the arms dealer known as the White Widow, and after convincing the White Widow that he is John Lark, the Widow presents him with a deal. She will give Ethan one plutonium core as a down payment, but he will only be given the rest if he frees the criminal mastermind, the aforementioned Solomon Lane, from a convoy that is traveling through Paris. Ethan seemingly agrees to the terms as the film cuts to a new scene, and we see the convoy as it gets blocked by a truck on a narrow street. Armed mercenaries emerge from the truck and start mowing down the police officers and guards who are part of the transport, and then another truck appears from behind, heading the convoy off from any kind of escape. More mercenaries appear as one of the individuals we see emerging is none other than Ethan Hunt. As the mercenaries take out the remaining cops and guards around him, Hunt progresses towards the armored truck, slowly and methodically. The music is haunting as the camera stays behind Ethan, not letting us look into his eyes that are covered behind a black mask. When he reaches the armored truck, he places an explosive charge on the back door, and then suddenly a bullet ricochets off the truck beside him, and Ethan whips around and shoots. His bullet wounds and downs a guard who managed to survive the initial onslaught. Ethan approaches the injured officer, his face still covered by the black mask. As he stands over the injured guard, he removes the mask, revealing a conflicted expression on his face. The mercenaries gather around Ethan, clearly curious to see how he will respond. Will he kill the guard, or let him live? If Ethan lets the guard live, the guard will be killed by the criminals who are now flanking Ethan anyway. But if he kills the guard, then he gets what he wants, the plutonium. He will get to save the world by sacrificing one life. Is this the breaking point, the moment where Ethan feels forced to take an innocent life for the greater good of the world? The inner conflict is over in a moment, as Ethan raises his pistol and pulls the trigger. And then, Ethan wakes up, so to speak. Remember, this is the second time this has happened in the film. It turns out that the scene where Ethan is forced to take an innocent life is merely a daydream sequence. Nothing of what we saw unfold was real. All we got was a snapshot of Ethan imagining what the consequences would be if he chose to do the White Widow's bidding. It turns out that there were no real stakes at hand. Ethan didn't have to make an impossible choice. From here, the rest of the plot unfolds just like any other Mission Impossible movie. Every time Ethan is pushed into a corner, he either finds a clever way to escape, or through flashback sequences, 
we see that Ethan was already two steps ahead of his enemies. This beautifully crafted scene where we see Ethan kill the guard damages the film as a whole because it showed us what Fallout could have been, but not what it actually turned out to be. This generic by the book plotline betrays the teaser trailers that promised that this is the movie where Ethan would be forced to come to terms with the fallout of his roguish actions. But there are no real consequences, nothing that Ethan has to truly suffer for. Hunt and company are all jokes and smiles at the end of the story, leaving us with a neatly buttoned up happy resolution. Ethan didn't learn or grow as a character, and the story is stripped of any emotional stakes. Just to drive the point home, there is a scene near the beginning of the film where the new bad guys, the Apostles, have stolen the plutonium right from under Ethan's nose. We then switch to a horrific news report, where we see that three major cities have been destroyed by the Apostles, which is far more destruction than what we saw in Ghost Protocol where the Kremlin was destroyed previously. But, like most everything else in this film, it turns out that it's all a farce. It's all a setup to convince a physicist who is in league with the Apostles that the Apostles accomplish their nefarious mission, also he will give the IMF the passcode to his phone. Once again, it's all a cheap trick to give us the illusion of gravitas because we see Ethan lose his cool and act as if he's about to do something crazy. It lets us believe that the film has emotional depth, only to have it ripped out right from underneath us, again. These three scenes wrap Fallout in a web of filmmaking deceit that tricks us into thinking that it's a movie that will explore the depths of Hunt's character, but in fact, all Fallout did was give us the illusion of consequences. Aside from the death of Alec Baldwin's character, very little actually happened in the film. As I already mentioned, one of the previous Mission Impossible movies, Ghost Protocol, had real stakes for the plot and the characters, whereas Fallout merely putters out by the end. Any of the moments that had any gravitas were stripped away, leaving us with a generic espionage action movie that just didn't stick the landing. Fallout was a technical achievement, not a creative one. All of the best moments that were hinted at in the teaser trailers turned out to be hollow moments, nothing more. But what these moments hint at is that Fallout had the potential to be something truly special and groundbreaking, but in the end, it ultimately couldn't live up to its name. But enough from me, what did you think about Mission Impossible Fallout? If you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Daddy? Daddy. Daddy. Well, son, since you haven't learned to respect your elders, it's time you learn to respect your betters. Oh! oh.